What did you get there? Um, I got 7.3. But I'm just realizing the memory right in the New York Times phrase, right? Took the words right out of my mouth. So I'm glad that you've learned to check that. Okay, I got 2.7. The units on that would be? Um, Newtons. Because it's a force. Yeah. All right, well now you should make a note to yourself. At this point in the course, you're probably going to be moving back and forth between radians and degrees. Yeah. So you always got to be checking to make sure you're in the right mode on your calculator. Here, earlier we were doing radians, but now we're back in degrees. So here we have F perpendicular is 2.7. Good. By the way, it might have been tempting to call this F sub Y, but that would not be the best notation here, because what we're interested in here is not whether this is parallel to the X and Y axes, but what its direction is related to R. So this is not a point where we want to think about F sub X and F sub Y. We should really use this new symbol, F perpendicular. So we did step four here. Now, notice, in order to figure out f perpendicular, did you use the sine or the cosine? The sine. You used the sine. Good. So what you basically figured out here is that the perpendicular component is just f times the sine of the angle. That's why sometimes you see this formula written like this. Oftentimes in the textbook, the torque wouldn't be written like this. It would be written like this. But it's important to realize these are identical formulas. Because what is f times sine theta? It's the perpendicular component of f. I wanted to start with this because it gives you much more intuition for what you're doing. And actually, this can lead to mistakes. Um, now, uh, because what if they had given you this angle? Well, then if you were using formulas mindlessly, it would be tempting to find the sine of 60. But that would not give us what we want. Um, and that's a trap that you might see. So I feel a little bit safer not to think too much in terms of this, but to think in terms of this. That way you know you're using the right angle. But if you are going to use this, then what is theta? Theta is the angle between F and R. So that's something you need to have in your notes. Theta is the angle between F and R. That's one reason why we had to draw R, because otherwise we can't find the angle between F and R. Um, that's why you can't plug this number into here, because this is not the angle between F and R. This is the angle between F and some arbitrary dashed line that I made. It's not the angle between F and R. This is the angle between F and R down here. All right, so if you are going to use this, you've got to use the right theta, the angle between F and R. But I think you'll, you'll understand things much better if you start with this formula. And you, it seems like you're very quick now at, at figuring out components, and then you'll use the sign automatically. All right, but I put in here that this is technically the formula, where theta is the angle between F and R. All right, now we should determine the sign of the torque. Well, would you expect this force to cause a clockwise or a counterclockwise rotation? Yeah, sometimes that's hard for people to think about. But just imagine this was the only force on the object, and here's the pivot point. Mm -hmm. And suppose that it was successful in causing rotation. Well, if it was successful in causing rotation, we would start rotating like this. That is the clockwise direction. So this is a clockwise torque. So should that be our positive or negative direction? Negative. Yeah, in your course, it's safest to stick with positive for counterclockwise and negative for clockwise. But I'll make a note that we're assuming counterclockwise is positive. Notice that I figured out the sign on the torque even before I figured out the magnitude. That's a really good habit in physics to figure out the sign first. Because if you wait to figure out the sign, you're likely to forget about it altogether. So step five, determine the sign of the torque. The sign of the torque indicates that uh, what direction the force tends to object rotate in, clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, so notice that um, some people might say, oh, this is negative because this is pointing downwards. Right. Well, that has nothing to do with it. Um, we're not thinking in terms of linear here. It's not that this is down, it's that it's, it's clockwise. Um, a downward force over here would cause a counterclockwise movement mm -hmm. around this point, which would be positive. So again, we can't confuse linear and rotation. 
Now we're ready for step six to determine the magnitude of the torque, F perpendicular times R. Well, you have all the pieces that we need for that already. So what are we plugging in for F perpendicular in this problem? 2.7. And what are we plugging in for R? So let's figure out our answer. What did you get there? Negative 8.1. And what units did that come out of? Newton meter. So notice we just figured out the units for torque. There's no special name for the units for torque. It's just called Newton meters. Force is in newtons, but torque is in newton meters, indicating that both the force and the distance play a role in how much rotation you're going to get. And here's our answer. All right, so I think there really were a whole bunch of steps there, so that's why it takes a whole handout to cover it. One of the keys is draw the R vector. If you haven't actually drawn the R vector, you're not going to have a reliable way of figuring out the torque. Also, you've got to figure out the sign on your own. This formula does not tell you the sign of the torque. We had to figure that out separately. That's why in the handout I put dots on top of things to show you're just going to plug in magnitudes here. You're just going to plug in magnitudes and then it's your job to figure out the right sign. This formula will also work, although this gives you more intuition for what you're doing. Now, it's common on a problem for there to be many forces, and every force could possibly generate a torque. So you have to go through this process repeatedly for every single force to figure out what the torque is. Um, what I recommend doing there is drawing a separate picture for each torque, because every picture you're going to have to draw the R vector. And if you draw all the different R vectors on the same picture, it's going to get really confused. So if you have multiple forces, I would draw a separate little sub-picture to draw the R and F for each one. Well, here's the same object that we had before that's rotating around this point. When you're ready, what would be the torque from this force? Zero. Good. We already talked about that. You cannot create a torque by pushing on the pivot point. How would that come out of the math? Well, that would come out when you tried to draw R. When you tried to draw R, it would be impossible because R is supposed to go from the pivot point to the force. But here, the pivot point is the same place as where the force is. So that just means you can't draw R. R is zero. And then you should just stop right there and see that the torque is zero. 